Now what's going on guys, Scott Stewart, I'm back with Icewind Dale, and we're headed into Kaldahar. It shall be done. Fighting their way through the goblin-infested valley of the pass, the survivors of the doomed East Haven expedition at last came upon the small hamlet of Kaldahar. Nestled within the roots of a massive oak tree, the tiny cottages were a welcome sight for the weary travelers. As the party approached the town, a warm breeze blew over them, chasing away the chill of the frozen pass and carrying with it the sweet scent of cooking fires. All right, here we are in Kaldahar. Forward. I knew you'd make it through. I just knew it. Uh, who are you and how did you know we were coming? I'm Nate. Arendelle said it was help was on the way. I've been out here every day, keeping a lookout for you. Where is the rest of your army? Are you just the scouts or something? Um, who is Arendelle? Arendelle's my friend. He's the oldest and smartest man in the whole world. He can talk to animals, you know. You should probably go see him. He'll be wanted to talk to you, too. He lives across the bridge on the other side of the brook. Just look for the house with the three big rocks out front. Alright, thanks, buddy. Stop right there. Don't take another step closer. Who are you? How did you get through the pass? What's wrong? We've had some troubles of late, and now we've got strangers in town that shouldn't have been able to make it through the pass. Care to explain how you got here? Wow. Uh, we're part of an expedition from East Haven, but not all of us made it. My sympathies for your fallen comrades. What happened? The pass is snowed in, and to make things worse, there are hordes of creatures, mostly goblins and orcs. That is grim news indeed. I fear things in Kaldahar are not much better. You may wish you stayed in East Haven. My, where's Aradel? Archdruid of Kaldahar? Friend, there is no Archdruid of Kaldahar. I hope you didn't travel through the past to find one, else your journey has been in vain. Is there anyone, another druid, perhaps, that might know for certain? Well, there's old Arendelle. We've seen him talking to birds, so we figured he was, well, a little touched in the head. Could be he knows what you're, find a druid. Southwest of town, there's a two-story house embedded in the tree. Looks like a big stone wall at the door. That's Arendelle's house, just south and east of Kaldahar Run, east of the bridge. Alright, thank you. Alright, well, let's see where we're at here. So this, I believe, is called, is, oh, this is Garth's equipment shop. Must check it out. Of course. Ah, so where the wind blows, travelers seek shelter and supplies. Mayhap? Good day and cheer to you, sir. My name is Gurth. I tell by the cut of your cloth and your bearing that you are a visitor. Fresh to Kaldahar. Is there something you wish to purchase? What is this place? This is my shop, friend. I supply caravans on the shade of this great oak. This shop was my father's and my father's before him, and it dates almost three generations back, if you can believe it. Like many of the places in Kaldahar and the surrounding lands, there is much history to be found if one digs deep enough. Are you a historian? Nay, I want to go far as to say that. I dabble in time's passage, perhaps, but it is not a full-time occupation, merely a hobby. I do enjoy learning more of the past and examining trinkets from around the area. I have quite a collection, a little museum of sorts. Some call it junk, but... Well, what sort of things do you collect? Keys, notes, books on the region. If you happen to come across any on your travels, I'll pay a fair sum for them to take them off your hands. Okay. So if we find any keys, books, or documents, we can, uh, if, can we get purchase them back? Of course, I purchase such things only for my own interest and to preserve the history and culture of the region. They do not end up on a rat in the caravan to some Kalamshan market, that's for sure. Kalamshan market. All right. So let's sell some of this stuff. Oh, he doesn't want the daggers. He'll buy the shields off of us. For one cold, not like they're that worth holding on to, huh? This is on most of the stuff. It adds up. Winter wolf pelts sell for quite a bit of coin. I'll take the gems. All three of the sunstones. I get a 66. That'll work. 
and he can't identify, and since we have nobody else who can, we might as well spend 100 gold to identify this shield. That's what sucks. Stop ward plus one. And then we'd have to pay 100 gold to identify these nine arrows, so we'll wait on that. But the shield might be worth something for us. The small shield was created as a gift from the leader of Clan Battlehammer to one of his trusted servants. The servant, Warjar Stoutbrew, protected the clan's leader family from being killed and eaten by Yeti. Wardar wore the shield proudly for ten years before he was killed by orcs in the spine of the world. His sacrifice allowed a few key members of the Battlehammer clan to escape to safety. Ooh, it's a plus two shield. No protection against missile attacks. So it's probably more of a, like a buckler. So it'll actually give Chance a better, a minus two instead of a minus one. But it won't protect from missile attacks, where his large shield gives him plus one versus missile attacks. I'm not using a shield. Um, plus one armor. Maybe we'll give it to Brendan for now. Since his shield doesn't do anything for missile attacks either. And that'll put him at minus two. It shall be done. All right, so let's head up. I believe there's a path up. Yeah, there is. It's been a while since I've been in Kaldahar. But I do believe there is a tower, a wizard tower or something up here. Yep, all right. With the goblin, Weenog. I if you no stick up on Weenog like that. Who are you? Me, Weenog. Who are you? I am Chance, who lives here. Surely this tower cannot belong to you. No, tower belongs to Master. Weenog only servant. Cleans tower, makes beds, cooks tasty food for the master. Uh, who is your master? Orok. The master. Great wizard the master is. We now service the master, so one day he can be great wizard too. I see. Where might we find this great wizard? The master is in study through door. Go in if he wants to speak with the master. We know not allowed in study. Master keeps powerful magics in there. Books, papers, and wizard things that we know not understand. Okay, so he's got a... Is that cleaning? <laughs> a little goblin uh, maid. Orc the Grey. Very well. Well now, what have we here? It's been a long time since I had a guest. Welcome. My name is Orc. What brings you to my humble home? Uh let's see. I would ask I would like to ask you some questions about disturbances in the past. Ah yes, the disturbances. I'm afraid I can't be much help to you there. I rarely leave this tower for any reason, you see. My studies prevent me from taking an active interest in the affairs of the people of Kaldahar. Their problems are no concern of mine. But you live in Kaldahar. How could you not care what happens to the town and its people? I've had many homes. Kaldahar is not the first and certainly won't be the last. It is unfortunate that these simple folk have been made to suffer so, but I have no desire to get involved. After all that matters to me is my work. What's so important about your work? Everything! Knowledge is the one true source of power in this universe. Everything else is fleeting. I've spent years collecting these tomes and scrolls you see before you. They are my life's work. Contained within their passages are the clues that may one day unlock the mysteries of an ancient and nearly forgotten arcane lore. What sort of arcane lore? My studies revolve around the arcane lore that deals specifically with the creation of mythos. A mythal is a powerful elven enchantment that is essentially a weave of protective magic that can be cast over a vast area. I've discovered numerous historical accounts of elven mages laying such mythals over an entire city. Interesting. Tell me more. The details of the accounts are vague at best. The mages of the old elven kingdoms vanished long ago, retreating to the safety and isolation of the Isle of Evermeet. It seems that all of the written knowledge of mythal enchantment has vanished with them. 
For over a decade, I've, tra I've traveled the realms searching for remnants of this forgotten lore. That is what brought me to Kaldahar. You think the answers you seek are here in Kaldahar? Not exactly. While exploring the fabled ruins of Myth Draenor, I came across an old, tattered manuscript buried amid the rubble of an abandoned lab library. The manuscript made several references to an elven outpost located somewhere within the spine of the World Mountains. Naturally, I came here to find the settlement. Thus far, I've been unable to locate it. Well, if I come across any elven ruins, I'll be sure to let you know. I appreciate your interest. If, by some miracle, you find this lost elven outpost and happen upon any materials regarding mythos, please deliver them to me here. I am willing to pay a handsome reward for such a service. Alright, so we get a quest. Uh, let's do some spell searching here. I see. Well, you've come to the right place. I can certainly provide you with a number of useful spells for your spellbook. Of course, I'm only willing to offer you certain spells. I fear much of the knowledge I possess is beyond your comprehension. Perhaps in the future, you may be worthy of such advanced knowledge. Okay, well, what do you got? Cocky little bastard. And he's not going to want to buy any of these weapons for sure. The only guy that I would worry about is Johnny for spells, since uh, clerics gain spells just in naturally. He's got a bag of holding for 10,000 gold. I think we're a bit off of that. What else does he have? A Scarab of Goodwill. You can cast friends once per day. It gives you a plus five to your charisma. 13 rounds. Seems like a decent thing, but for six grand? I don't know about that. Clasp of Bronze Cloak. Piercing, Slashing, and Magic Resistance. And Girdle of Gond. Open Locks and Fine Trap bonus. That'd be nice. Alright, what can we get for our mage here? Identify. I kind of want that. Find Familiar. I never really use Familiar as much. A mage has 12 hit points. Okay, so. So you're familiar, your wizard has a link with the half familiar total hit points. However, the caster must take care to treat it. For the familiar should die, the caster loses the bonus hit points and half the familiar hit points again as damage. And. If a familiar dies, the caster loses one point of con permanently. Hmm. So we have a chaotic good caster, so he would get a fairy dragon with 12 hit points, so he would gain 6. 6 armor class, magic resistance, cast mirror image once per day. That's kind of what he would give us, is mirror image. Well, we definitely want to identify so we can learn some stuff. We don't want to go too crazy here, because we might find quite a bit of these as we go anyway. Um, doesn't have that many great spells, but he kind of told us that he didn't have many great spells. He only has up to level 2 spells. Let's just get identified for now. I'll think about the familiar thing. So we should be able to learn identify. Alright. And let's get rid of that for now and put identify in. Yes. We can't rest in here. Agreed. We probably can't rest in town either. No, we have to. It shall be done. They don't like you resting in town. Let's go back to the past, rest, and then we can figure out what those arrows are with that identify spell. And then head back into Kaldahar proper and look around some more. Oh, we've got to fight a goblin marshal. Is that the same guy from up there? I don't know. Speak your mind. All right, so he can learn that these are pretty much plus one arrows. I could only assume now with his spell. Arrows plus one, so it gives plus one to Thacko. Or your hit. 
chance. Keep those off to the side, not that they're that necessary at this moment, but... Agreed. So bows, I don't believe, are magical. Like, if you need to hit somebody with magic, to hit them, for example, if you have a plus one bow, I think it helps with your attack, but the arrow, I believe, is what matters when it comes to the bitten through, like, damage resistance and stuff. It's been a while. I think that's how it works in this. Well, here are the stones we were talking about, so this must be... Welcome. Yep. I've been expecting you for some time now. Expecting us? How's that possible? We've only just recently arrived in town. Ah, you must be Arendelle. Say that. Yes, I am Arendelle, known to some as the Archdruid of Kaldahar. Though I invite you to dispense with the formalities and just call me Arendelle, plain and simple. Titles tend only to serve one's own vanity and aren't really of much use in this small mountain community. You are the Archdruid, eh? Then I assume you can tell me what is going on around here. Yes. It was I who sent Hallister to East Haven for help. His death weighs heavily upon my conscience. For not only was he a student of mine, but he was also a friend and trusted companion. He will be missed. As will Rothgar and the other members of your expedition. Hmm. You knew Rothgar? Let us say I knew of him. Word of his deeds has reached even our small, isolated town. I also know that his death, tragic as it is, was no accident. Someone or something did not want your party to reach Kaldahar alive. Hmm. Tell me what troubles the town. There are malevolent forces at work in these mountains. Forces that seek to undermine the delicate balance we druids have struggled to preserve for centuries. Malevolent forces. Could you be more specific? No, oh, what did I could? The face of the evil remains hidden, but its presence is unmistakable. All about us, there are signs of its damaging influence on the balance. The unnatural weather, the recent rash of abductions, the numerous monster sightings in the past. These all point towards something sinister. Even the animals sense something is amiss. Hmm. Can you tell me any more about these disturbances? I can only tell you of what little I know. Which disturbances would you have me speak of? Tell me of the unnatural weather. Oh, the weather in these mountains has always been harsh, but never like this. Fierce storms ravage the valley without warning, often lasting for several days at a time before vanishing as quickly as they come. It is barely midway into Leafall, and yet the pass to the south has been snowed in entirely. Weather such as this is most unnatural. Nature presents itself in cycles that are predictable by those who know what to look for. Hmm. Can you tell me more? I can only tell you of what little I know. Which disturbances would you have me speak of? A uh, recent rash of abductions. Oh. At first, there were tales told by travelers of companions disappearing into the night, snatched up from their bedrolls as they camped along the narrow trail that winds through the pass. We did not think much of these tales, for such occurrences are not unheard of in these mountains. Then one night, Conman's boy Shemish went missing. The next morning, the whole town searched for the boy, but turned up nothing. He was just gone. Vanished, without a trace. That is strange indeed. The boy was just the first. Several nights later, another disappeared. Megan Potts, the local midwife. Her husband, Khalil, was grief-stricken to the point of madness. With barely a word to anyone, he snatched up his sword and marched off into the darkness after his wife. No one has heard from him since. And now... The abductions are occurring more frequently. Aiden, the old innkeeper from the Evening Shade, was taken only three days ago. Wow. Okay. More disturbances. Monster sightings. As I'm sure you have noticed by now, there seems to be quite a few goblins about. 
It is not usual to see so many of their kind roaming the mountains so late in the year. It is almost as something has drawn them out of their holes, like carrion birds drawn to the scent of death. As if the goblins weren't enough, several giants have been spotted moving through the pass in groups as large as ten. That many giants traveling together in such numbers indicates they are organized and are acting with a singular purpose. I have watched their activities closely. Their tracks trace a deliberate pattern through the mountains, almost as if they were on patrol. Another thing, while I was out scouting the giants, I discovered other sets of tracks, tracks I have never encountered before. What manner of beast made them? I could not say. Wow, okay. More disturbances? I can only tell you of what little I know. Which disturbances would you have me speak of? You spoke before balance. What sort of balance are you talking about? The balance. It is what the druids of Kaldahar hold sacred and have worked to preserve for generations. It is all around us. It is us. Balance is the harmony that is achieved when man and nature learn to coexist. No longer contending with one another, but coming together as two parts of a whole. You really take this nature thing seriously, don't you? <laughs> uh, can you tell me more about these disturbances? What can you tell me about the druids of Kaldahar? Balance is the belief that this town is built upon. The very reason for its existence. Druids of Sylvanus, the Oak Father, have tended this shrine since the beginning. For hundreds of years, we have striven to achieve the ideal balance between man and nature. When settlers finally came to this pass, it was the Archdruid Tolben, my predecessor, who laid the foundation for the relationship that led to the birth of this community. Okay, shrine. What shrine are you talking about? The great oak, the massive tree that stands above us, around us. It is a holy shrine to Sylvanus, for it was he who planted its seed when Faerun was first born. It is a testament to the raw power of nature, a monument to its ability to thrive in the face of adversity. Thanks to Tolben, the great oak we druids called the Kaldahar and the town that has come to be known by the same name have together become a monument of even greater significance, a monument to the balance. Who is this Tolben? Tolben was the catalyst for the transformation of the shrine from a sacred grove to a thriving community in which man and nature exist as one. At first, settlers were kept away from this site. The druids of old saw outsiders as an affront to the sanctity of the tree and its sphere of benign influence. They erected thorny brambles to keep intruders out and used their powers to frighten away the men and women that came to build homes in a place they felt was obviously so close to the gods. It wasn't until the succession of Archdruid Tolben that things changed. Unlike his predecessors, he believed that the settlement of the valley was not only inevitable, but it was actually the will of Sylvanus. He also believed that we had been wrong in keeping the settlers away, and that the Oak Father had intended people to share in the miracle of the Great Oak from the beginning. When Tolben finally became Archdruid, he formed a plan to fulfill the destiny of this sacred site by bringing about a union between the Great Oak Shrine and the Settlers. It was this union that the Archdruid Tolman believed would achieve the harmony that we had been striving for for generations. The harmony between man and nature. As it stands, Kaldahar is a monument to this vision. The tree and town exist in a natural symbiosis, where it is next to impossible to tell where one leaves off and the other begins. But now, the balance is threatened. I see. So what are we to do about all of this? I fear that if we do not soon discover the source of these disturbances, then all that we have worked for will be destroyed. The evil that has come to these mountains infects this town like a disease. As its people suffer, so does the tree suffer from the sickness that attacks the balance. 
corrupting it with its very presence. Already, the circle of warmth that radiates from the great oak has begun to recede. We were forced to abandon the outlying farmsteads as a result of the shrine's fading power. If we do not take action soon, I am afraid that the life-giving warmth will cease altogether. Both the great oak and the town nestled within its roots will die. This must not happen. We need your help. Hmm. Alright, very well. Together we shall root out this evil that threatens this town. What must we do? I suggest you begin by investigating the Vale of Shadows. It is a place not far from here. Darkness has always clung to the floor of the small canyon, as if the light of the sun itself were wary of the place. There are a number of ancient crypts hidden within the shadows of the Vale's narrow cliff walls. There have been rumors of the dead awakening and emerging from their dusty tombs to walk once more amongst men. If these rumors are true, then I suspect that whatever is responsible for disturbing their slumber may be behind the other disturbances as well. Go to the Vale of Shadows, learn what you can about the happenings there, then return here and we shall discuss a course of action. Good luck and farewell. All right, so there was a whole bunch of information. And uh, Aaron Dell doesn't have much going on in his place. Agreed. It shall be done. Whole bunch of info. So that, that's just uh, information dump right there. So we have an idea what's going on. There's monsters. There's bad weather. We got issues with uh, disappearances. Let's head to an inn. In memory of Archdrew Tolbin, founder of Kaldahar. There's the statue here. This is a potter. I believe there's an inn to the east. Uh oh. Run! The veil filled with yetis. Try to outrun them, but two of them still chasing me. Run! Get help! Whoa, yetis in town. Oh boy, yetis in town. I just took a smack. Get over there, Chance. There you go. Chance got him. Ooh, some Yeti, uh... Yeti, uh, pelts. What the heck is going on in this place? Thanks, I thought the time to draw my ancestors had finally come. Last time I ever stepped foot anywhere near the Vale, that's for certain. There are all sorts of strange creatures roaming around there now. The Vale of Shadows. My brother Silas and I made a pilgrimage there to pay our respects to our family crypt, like we do every year, but this time, I don't know. The Vale seems different, cursed somehow. The shadows have come alive, and there's yetis roaming the paths, attacking travelers. Your brother, where is he? Silas didn't make it. The largest yeti I've ever seen tore out of the snow and took a piece out of him with its claws. He fell, dead as a stone, blood everywhere. There, there was nothing I can do. He was carrying our family heirloom, but it's lost to us now. Uh, let's see. I could try and recover that heirloom for you. We were taking the main path, but considering how many beasts were in the Vale, Arendelle might know a safer path you can take. He wanders the mountains quite a bit and knows of more hidden trails than there are branches on the great oak. His home is southwest of the Great Tree. It's a two-story house made out of stone. I already spoke to Arendelle. I'll be on my way to the Vale soon. Thank you. Now that Silas is gone, that heirloom is all I have left to remember my family by. I would appreciate its safe return. Also, if you will come across any more yetis, you might want to collect their pelts once you've done away with the beasts. Conlin, the blacksmith, buys the pelts for a fair price. Orc may be able to make something out of those pelts, too. All right. Well, thanks for the info. Uh, we were just going to try to head to an inn, but craziness is happening in this place. 
There's the end. I think it's down here. Not that it matters, but I just figured I'd end the video at the end. The Root Tavern, this Root Cellar Tavern. I don't know if that's the inn, actually. Let's go to the tavern anyway. Of course. Alright, we'll end up in here. So, thanks for watching, guys. This video ran a little long, but Arendelle likes to talk, doesn't he? So, we will continue later with the next one. And, uh, thanks for watching. See you there.